Welcome back to my 119 Hardcore series. Last episode I built this home for myself and living here is great, but today we need to upgrade our gear because, well, it's kind of basic and it definitely made building difficult. Let's head inside and we can get a bit of enchanting done here. I could upgrade my axe with efficiency 2. If I had 30 levels that could have been efficiency 4. Let's combine that with our other iron axe and just like that we're out of levels. Also, mining stone isn't too bad now. That's good because I'm going to need plenty of this for our builds. But mining deep slate and diamond levels is still quite a pain. Speaking of diamonds, we need more of you. Thank you. No, I saw this short. I'm prepared for this. As I was saying, give me these diamonds. Thank you. You can't go wrong with early game diamonds. Anyway, back to the story. Mining deep slate with an unenchanted pick is awful. Nobody wants to do this. This is the kind of thing Mr. Beast would set as a challenge, like the person who can mine the most deep slate with an unenchanted iron pick. Okay, more diamonds. Server, give me diamond. Okay. Only three of you are going to get that joke. Anyway, I came down here to show that mining deep slate with this pickaxe was terrible. And we've got three veins of diamonds since I've been down here. I got more diamonds actually just going pickaxe bad than I did when I was actually mining for diamonds. Kind of sad. I was trying to make a point, but let's just go back up to the surface. Okay. 10 diamonds, lots of redstone, plenty of gold, deep slate. We're back on level 6 though after a little bit of enchanting. Let's go kill this skeleton. I need your XP, would you please die? Okay, thank you. Creepers and spiders aren't a bad option for XP. I don't suppose we're going to find a lot of endermen out here in the rainstorm. I need the spider string for a bow as well. I don't have any ranged weapons and it makes mob hunting a bit more dangerous than I'd like. This is a, a bit slow. I probably just need to build a farm for XP though. It's too early to build an enderman or a guardian farm, but I can't keep fighting mobs out here on the shore all night. Building a dark room mob farm is easiest over water. That way if you fall off the gigantic pillar we need to build, you don't die. It's good not to die in hardcore. We need to build up at least 128 blocks above the surface of the water, but I'm also near the shore so I'm going to go up a few more than that too. We'll be able to get creepers, zombies, skeletons, and spiders out of this farm, although spiders are a bit of a pain and can clog up the farm. Now that we're here, I need to expand this platform out a little bit. And once I have a little bit of space to work, I'm going to make sure there's a torch up here and then jump off. Did you think I was kidding? Don't die, don't die, don't die. Okay, now I can add ladders all the way back up so we can get on and off the platform. I think I'm going to make the entire farm out of wood. We have a bunch of spruce and I know it takes a lot of material to make it. I also don't want to use up the cobbles, it just kind of looks bad at this scale. Back up the platform, we'll start with a collection system. I'm going to start with a double chest and then expand out the platform so I can work all the way around it. I'm going to add four double chests surrounding a 2x2 two two area in the middle. And I'm going to run one hopper into each of those chests to fill up the middle area. Mobs are going to drop onto these hoppers where we'll kill them. Everything's going to go into the hoppers then the chests. Some people don't use chests there or they only use two. I find it fills up way too quickly on single player if you build this farm properly. So I always use four double chests and still regularly have to move drops out of them. I'm going to add some slabs above each double chest. Upper slabs are going to prevent creepers from seeing you and exploding and prevent baby zombies from escaping the farm and attacking. These corners aren't strictly necessary, but creepers can see you if you go into them. And I have a tendency to do that. I don't know why. So I put the blocks here to remind myself not to be quite so um, stupid. Now I need to build a tower around this 2x2 two two drop chute. I'm going to continue to use wood, but you could really use any full block except glass. Glass lets light in, and with the new spawning rules, this will drastically reduce your rates. Once I've built the tower up, I'm going to go out 8 blocks away from the 2x2 two two drop chute. Then at the end of that, on the ninth block, I'm going to go up 2, and then I'm going to go out 8 from that again. At the end of that second water channel, I'll also build up a wall that is too high. Okay, that's one high. Uh, 2. There we go. This is kind of high up, and some parts of this are going to be over land, so I'll need to be a bit more careful. Now I just have to repeat the first water channel four times and put a barrier wall up too high on either side of each water stream. Now I just need to build some simple spawn platforms. This is basically just a floor that connects the two water channels together until this is completely full. Once the floor is done, I'll just put a too high wall all the way around all of this floor and repeat on all the other sides. I'll do this for all four of the connections where there's two water channels that will meet. And then once the lower floors are done, I'll have to build the upper ones and do the same size floor on either side of the upper channels as well. We're going to end up with 12 spawning platforms in total, which is plenty. Now I can add water that will sweep the mobs into the kill chamber. I brought up two buckets and I can just make an infinite water source while I'm up here and then remove that when I'm done. We're going to place trapdoors over every water covered block and close those down. Mobs are going to think they can just wander over these trapdoors. They're going to fall into the water. You know what happens after that. It's die, creeper, die. 
I'm also going to put as many trapdoors on the upper bit of the outer walls as I can. These trapdoors will prevent skeletons and zombies from spawning, which will drastically increase the rates of creeper spawn. I don't want to cover every spawnable spot, just most of them. Zombie drops are pretty useless and skeletons, well I only want one decent bow and then some arrows, and then it's just bone meal after that. Now I just have to cover the entire roof in lower slabs and this farm will work. I've let it fill up here so you can see how it's going. Unfortunately the XP will get stuck in the hopper sometimes, like it will here. We can fix that by adding some carpet over each hopper, and then the XP will come directly to us. It's a pretty easy fix. Alright, let's look at how great this farm is already doing. When I started building the farm, I was on level 6. Already with a few swings, I'm on 17, 18. I'm just going to stay up here for a few minutes, I'm on 25. This is a heck of a lot better and safer and faster than killing mobs on that shoreline was. I do see one problem though. Sometimes mobs aren't falling down. I have a feeling it's because I didn't spider proof, so I went to check the footage. I did want some spider drops, but as you can see from the replay mod footage, because I didn't prevent spider spawns, it fills up quickly with spiders and then they clog the drop chute and nothing else can fall down. And then no new mobs can spawn and it slows down the farm. We're gonna have to fix this. I knew that would happen, but I didn't have wool so I was being lazy. Alright, presto changeo, there's an hour of my life I'm never getting back. I had to remove a lot of the roof, shear a bunch of sheep, put these carpet bits up here so there are no three blocks spawnable spaces anywhere within the farm, but as you can see it's worked. Let's take a look at all the mobs in the farm now, it's much, much better. With that mob farm done now, it's just a matter of getting levels, enchanting, here we're a good fortune 3 efficiency 4 pick, and some better prot 3 leggings. Then we have to go back to the farm, get more levels, which is obviously working so much better now. Then it's more enchanting, another efficiency 4 on a book, and then we can add that to our pick to give us an unbreaking 3, fortune 3, and now efficiency 5 pickaxe. Back down to the deep slate level, oh yeah that's better. You love to see this, breaking deep slate isn't fun even with efficiency 5, but that's a lot better than efficiency 2. Finding diamonds is actually so much more rewarding the first time you have a fortune 3 pick to collect them with. I was so into this that I just stayed down and collected a few more diamonds. I wasn't really down here for the diamonds, I just wanted to test out the new pickaxe, but now that mining feels nicer, it's time to put in some stairs to our mineshaft to make getting up and down a lot easier. I will actually put a build around this later, it's a big build though so I'm going to need a lot of resources. For today's village slash personal building project, I wanted to make a little dock and a boathouse out front of our home. I talk a lot about the stony shoreline and how much I love living on the coast like this, I thought we should take the time to build up a welcoming dock for any ships that may come by. Unfortunately, the in-game recording did not save as my hard drive was full and I didn't notice. Video editing can be... yeah, weird like that. I mean, some parts of this needed to be shown from replay mod, but that footage had already been sped up, so now it's slowed down with super fast footage, and that, ladies and gents, is how you drop a ton of frames. Moving on, I started with a design that incorporated oak planks into the walls with stone, but I didn't like it, so I went back to all stone and stone brick. The stripped spruce carried over from the house, and I stuck with this 5x5 building method that I've been using to create a little L-shaped boathouse. I wanted to create a little viewing platform on the second floor, so I built a small little room around that. The acacia template on the dock is what I thought the dock may look like. It's not staying, so I had to replace this with spruce planks, then add some stairs and a few support pillars near the land. I topped those with stone slabs and then built up some rails. The roof uses the same spruce deep slate color palette as my starter house, and the same stair, backward stair, stair angles to make it feel like part of the same build. Then I just had to connect the lower roof to the upper tower, and that was looking good. Originally I put in these glass panes to match the house as well, but I hated them here, so I replaced those with a fence which I think looks a ton better. The glass didn't really work for me when half the building is just open air, it looked too formal or something. The fence used this way looked a lot more like you'd actually see here, just a couple of cross beams to keep the mobs out. I feel like there's plenty of storage in the boathouse, I should probably add a few boats for rent, on the dock I added a couple of barrels, some cargo being delivered, a couple of piers, and then added my boat. I really like how this looks now, I just need to remove this podzel. I'll need to grow all the spruce somewhere else because I just can't keep having it make my home look like cows pooed all over my lawn like a thousand times. Podzel's a great block in the right area, but this shoreline surely isn't it. Let's take a look through the completed boathouse and dock. Inside you have plenty of storage, crafting table, this open window here to provide service from, if I just hop out front you can see it was looking pretty clean. When we head upstairs we'll be able to go look from the deck that I wanted to build and also there's an attic for a bit more storage if we need to use that. As we head down to the end of the dock you'll see that I added a gate to keep mobs from attacking me while I'm down here. Only trident wielding drowns and phantoms are a real threat now. I also have my fishing rod and the fishing loot in this barrel on the end. I actually need to do a bit of fishing but not with that rod. I've also upgraded my sword to a diamond sweeping edge sharpness sword. That's helping. Let's go enchant this diamond axe. 
That's efficiency four. And then this chest plate with prot three, not bad. When I went back up to the mob farm, I looked down at the work from the last few days. Seeing the house in the dock really made me want a boat out front, but not a little Minecraft boat. Okay, first of all, let's go enchant this book and then my boots. And then if we just add the book to the iron chest plate we already have, protection four on breaking three, that's not bad. Now let's build this boat. I'm gonna need a sail. I can't believe I'm already shearing more sheep. This actually hurts me. Okay, let's put a temporary block at the top of this kelp so we can build off of this. I don't want the boat to be too big. The dock isn't meant for a cruise liner, of course. It's just a private little dock. We'll go three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. That should be plenty long enough for what I wanna build. I've seen a lot of small Minecraft boats, and while I'm not following a specific tutorial for this, I would say it's a mashup of probably three or four small boats I've seen plenty of times in the past. I just need to create a little shape at first and then refine that as I go. I like the way these stairs pointing out and the other ones pointing toward each other will give a little bit of a unique shape here. From there, it's just a couple of barrels, a crafting table. We'll figure out where we're gonna put the mast. Somewhere in maybe there's good. Once that's up, the sails can go on it. Then I just wanna add a crow's nest and finish out lining the boat's shape. Stairs are a real lifesaver on this build, as are the slabs. Everything on a small scale like this, it's super important to be able to create diagonals and curves, and doing all that at this tiny scale is really difficult. Now I just need to build up a room in the back here for a captain's cabin. It doesn't have to be huge, just a place to duck off and go to sleep. I'll give that a bit of shape, add a door to it, and a couple of trap doors, and voila! Let's extend the sail up the crow's nest, throw a bed in next to the chest, I'm going to widen this middle section of the boat so we can actually walk around the mast without having to jump around the side. It was just a little too cramped. And I'll just round the front bit here with some stairs. And let's just fix this one. I'm going to add a few lanterns to the fence post for some proper lighting. And then go up front as well and do the same thing. Alright, let's take a quick peek at it. Yeah, I think that's looking super nice. I didn't want to go overboard, just a little vessel that's coming into the dock. I'm really liking that. I need to make one more fix to the house before we move on. I never set the auto composter back up after we removed it, but the iron farm doesn't stop giving me poppies. I need to compost those, so let's quickly get the composter upstairs on the wall here, with a chest below that and a chest above, and hoppers will just connect the two. Then we'll just need to fix the floor with slabs so we can reach into the upper chest. And then our last enchanting for the day, let's grab lure three on this fishing rod, power four on a book. We already have made a really decent bow with the mob farm, and this will make it up to power five. Well, I'm gonna hang out and fish now. I'm desperately low on food and we'll need to take care of that next time, but a few cod and salmon will help in a pinch. I hope you enjoyed today's mob farm dock and boat builds. It was an action packed and yet kind of short episode. That's all the time we have for today. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.